Okay, we're back. We have a whole bunch of two, three minute videos to put together. Okay, I put the uh, 45 thou washer in here, which is, uh, what, 17 less than my one we took out. So I'm going to try that. I ground um, three, three to four off of here. So that'll give us a number there. So between all of these things, we should at least have something close to working now. Hopefully. We'll find out. That's why we do mock-ups. Gasket didn't stick there good enough yet, so put the bolts in there like we did before. I'm going to try to tighten screws kind of semi close so you don't warp the cover in there. So you don't torque them real hard on one side, just kind of bring things in. Solid. Well, that's weird. Okay, what's going on here? How can that be locked solid and this is not? Hmm. I'm not sure how that's possible. <laughs> So here's our end play. So this gear is loose good use, but this one's locked solid. Yet you have to be pushing on this one in order to lock it solid. So I don't understand how that's going. That don't make sense at all. Rotated and it went and it popped loose. So, whatever the hell it's hitting on in there, that's weird. I don't know what that caught on down there. Hmm. 
Don't know. Nothing to catch on. Then we'll take it out. We'll look. See if we can find it. Yeah, got plenty of clearance. That's why I didn't double check too much. I guess I should have stopped before I started torquing and everything. And I figured it'd be tons of clearance. There is, but it wasn't for some reason. Washers in here, a couple washers, a couple bearings, rollers. Helps to use the right terminology at times, anyway. All right. We have in play on the shaft here. We want to check to see what that is. Let's put our tool back on. Push in on that. Push in on that. Let me see if I got our eight or nine that we want. Yeah. Eight. Yeah, I don't have my eight. I wanted eight. Got our seven now. Dragon on seven. So we have seven. So we'll probably lose a couple thousand from the gasket. So we're down to five. So I need to grind a couple more thousand off that spacer. I don't like being down there that tight. Okay. Now we're going to check our second gear in play. Okay, we have some now. All right. So remember, we got in play this way. So you want to push it all the way in. Then we check our in play. You can hear it. I don't know if you can see it, but you can hear it. Now, if you pull the shaft all the way out and check your in-play, then you're going to have more, potentially more than what you really have. Okay, what did I do with that feeler gauge I put away? Okay, now you take your feeler gauge and you drop this down in between this, the plate in there, the second gear retaining plate, and this gear itself, and measure what you got. So this is our 8 that we have we're using on the main shaft. And see, that goes in there with no problem. I'm pushing on everything. And the feeler gauge is loose right now. So we have more than eight. Okay, so let's go bump that up a few thou. Let's bump it up to like a 12. There's 12. Try that. Okay, we, we locked it. See, it's not coming out. So we got less than 12. So we got more than eight, less than 12. So let's try 10. Way on the inside of the tranny of the plate down there. It's tight at 10 way in there. But up here we get to it easy. It's loose. So the plate is basically it's sitting like this on the bottom. Underneath the gear we can't see it, but up here top we've got a lot of clearance right here like this. So you always gotta measure the tight spot. Okay, so 10 was a little bit tight. So let me try the eight underneath. There's our eight. It's got drag on it eight, so it's got eight. Okay, now that's with no clearance here. So you got eight plus the five or so that we got here. What do we have here? We had seven. So we got uh, five, that's 12 thousands in play on the tight spot and we got another five or so more on the top up here but that don't count 
So we can take out the uh, you know at least five thousand more out of this. Um, we can try taking ten. The gear is pretty loose on this. It flops around a lot, but I'd rather take it out uh, a little bit at a time. Now, if we take two more thigh off of this, it'll go in that way further, which will lose two off of this one. So that'd be six. We take out five. We're down to one thigh clearance at the bottom. And then it comes out this way. So I think we'll take five out of this washer here on second gear. And I'll take another thigh or two off of the, uh, the spacer out here. And that should get me pretty close to where I want to be. You, just want, you want to make sure you got clearances on this stuff. Better to be loose than tight. And I still have to gain a couple more tenths of thousand clearance over here on the main shaft bearings on this other side too. So I'll probably go ahead and hone that just slightly before I do the final cleaning. You see all the stuff is just pre-mock-up. Lots of mock-up. Trainings aren't hard to do, they're just time consuming. Everything's adjustable. Or not everything, but a lot of stuff is. As long as you just do one thing at a time, though, it's not too awful hard to get it all dialed in. Right now, it's very usable the way it is, but. If I take another five out of there, I think it'd be better. Good whack. Yeah, I'll lose my bearings. There, I almost lost my rollers up there. Put this out as an assembly. I'll take it here though. locked up in here. Now we're a little bit it's hitting heavy right here on this bracket right here. Right here in this what am I down here on this side? Right here. So I'm gonna take a punch and just give it a little whack right there and see if I can center things up a little bit better. Take my punch. I'm just going to hit it right there. Now, when you tighten up these two screws up here, it might have twisted the plate a little bit and moved it out. So we're just going to have to tap it a little bit to see if anything happens. Feels pretty solid. Okay, so give it, give it a couple more good hits. One little starting hit and two good hits to see if it moves a little. Washer back in here. There it is. Now that might have changed with another five. It might not have made any difference at all. We don't know. I still don't know why this thing locked up. There's nothing to mock up against. So I have no idea what it locked against when it was tight. But it was tight. Okay. So what are we at here? We're gonna Change this one right here. Okay, it's forty-five thou. This one's forty-nine fifty. So I'm bump that up to a fifty. That'd be nice if that thing moved in there, the retaining plate, but I doubt if it did. Hmm. Yeah, 
schneiden. Then put that on there like that. Put the washer back on. Put back together again. Well, luckily it got looser. And we'll see. gasket here and put this through there so you want to tear the gasket down there Tighten up. back over there. A lot of repetitive work here. See? Feels like it did before. So here's our sand eight. It's 
still going in there, so we must have moved it over about five thousand. Okay, so that was a fifty. So we need to go to a fifty-five now. Here's a fifty-five right here. This is a forty-five. Oh, back's torn. Okay, so we know 50 is fine, no problem. So that's our drop back number. And then we can, uh, we'll do one more of these at 55 and see if it uh, tightens up. If it feels good, we'll go with that one. If it doesn't, we'll drop back. Tight, didn't I? Mm. No. I think I did. Maybe not. Yeah, we'll double check. Double check. If in doubt, double check. It's quicker to do that than it is to uh, put it all back together again the same thing because I wasn't sure. Which I've done lots of times. I think I just did this before, didn't I? Should be 55. It is. Well, they had a 62 in it originally. But everything's different than what it was before.
going in together like it's supposed to. Binding up. Locked up a little bit again, but it freed up. Pretty good. Put the bearings in there. Definitely tighten things up. Yeah, we definitely don't have eight in there no more. Yeah, you only got about three at most. Let's see, here's a four. Four is tight. Still tight down there at the bottom. Hitting with a hammer didn't really do anything for it, which doesn't surprise me any. Okay, here's a one and a half. That's the smallest one we got. That comes out. So we got more than one and a half. That's a good thing. Here's a three. Oh, there it is. I thought I had a two. Oh, it's two and a half. Oh, okay. We're using weird numbers. Definitely hitting on two and a half. So I move it all the way out. So we should have about seven. Hopefully more than six. Seven goes in there easily. Eight. Eight's good. Try right, ten. Goes in there, no problem. 12 is next. Yep. Didn't go. Let's 
Should like 11 probably. So 11 will work. And if we gain some inflow here. See a little loose than it used to be. Check our inflow here, see what we got. Might have gained a little bit. We had uh, seven, I think. Or eight. No, we had eight or nine. I think it was eight. Here's nine. Very tight nine. All right, so we haven't gained anything there. So we got to 11 to 12. Tight way up in there. Yeah, way at the bottom. Yeah, that's definitely tight down there. So anyway, we're getting so much clearance. Okay, yeah, we don't have that. Just gotta get down the right spot. So we've got nine. So it looks like it's nine to ten. So that's before we tighten the, the gasket way down. And also before we get any more extra wear, so it kind of goes hand in hand. And so 11, 10 goes in there nicely. Just, just a nice little drag on it. So we got 10 thou there. We had a nine, a tight nine, so it's eight and a half. So they're almost equal. We're above the eight. So we're probably gonna squeeze a little bit out of this gasket. But things are going to wear a little bit too, so we'll gain back some wear. As long as it's not too tight initially, so you get through the break-in process, we should be okay. So, I think we're pretty good on our clearances now. So, we know that this here is now, got clearances in here now. So this is our 9 in here. Actually, if you push this all the way in here, this drops down pretty low on the clearance right here. It's hard to do that with one hand. I'm pushing on this with my thumb. But it still rotates, so it's not hidden. And we're still rotating freely here and, and out here. So we have no binding. Everything's real, everything works like it's supposed to be. It's clearanced, so we know we're good. Now we can either button this thing up for real right now, or we can put the other parts in here and finish doing stuff and take it all back apart later. So if you're in a hurry, you button it up right now and hope you got everything that's perfect. But in the real world, if you get in trouble doing that crap. You gotta tear the gasket out, and if you're lucky, you don't destroy that gasket, because that's the one you're fitted with. And so it's better to uh, not go all for it right now. Continue checking stuff, making sure you got what you got correct first. That's the best way of going. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and then put the cluster gear in here. Put all the parts in here. Let's see what kind of real numbers we're going to have on all these other parts. We still got to do all the shifting mechanism yet, so there's still a lot to be done. All we've got right now is we got the bearings fitted, the in place fitted. So now you work on the shifter. So we're two thirds of the way through the process. Why people get frustrated with these old trainings, you got to do a lot of clearance checking and stuff like that. And they want to rush it. You're going to spend 15, 20 hours doing this training. Unless you rush it, and you can probably do it in 8 to 10. Unless you really rush it, and you need less, but then you got a pile of crap. best to slow down, take your time, do it right. 
Charge more if you have to. But do it right. Then the customer will be happy because it'll live for many years without any issues. Look how nice that came out of there. So you think you can save time and leave these bearings in here, don't you? Not a chance in hell. <laughs> Too many other parts you gotta put in. Okay, I'm not gonna grind any more off this washer here and move it or spacer. Okay, but we are gonna put this in. So we've previously fitted this. So we know that works. We got our shifter in there. I mean, our kicker's in there, so we know that should be close. With any luck. Make sure all the bearings are in there with the So what we got to do is we got to line this thing up and shove it in there correctly. I'm going to engage the spline where it belongs. Remember, the fat spline is the one that goes all the way in the bottom. And we have a spring right here that's supposed to be in there too, so we're going to go ahead and put that in there. And I always take a lot of grease and stuff that damn thing in there to make sure it's lubed up. That way it doesn't fall out. See, it stays put. You don't lose it. The spring's in there for a reason, so it's best to have it in there. Now to get this cluster gear, you got to go all the way in past this lip in here, past second gear usually. You usually can't slip it through this one, you go all the way to here to get it to go in. And the spring gets in the way of doing that, so if we can do it like this, there we go. We are able to cheat coming the first one. Makes it work better. Okay, try to get the spline lined up. Done deal. Some lube on that thing. Washer out of there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put this in there. More likely these gears are going to have to slide all the way over, like that. If you're lucky, you can get them in here. Look at that. Here we go. Slip right in there like they're supposed to. Everything's kind of in there where it belongs right now. That's always a good sign, obviously. Okay, I'm going to put this trap door in here. Okay, now this one bolt here was giving me some headaches here, so I'm going to run a die over this real quick. This was this one here, not this one. I'm going to run a die on both to make sure they're good. Run over here to the machine shop area. Let's see, 516 is fine. It should be this one right here. Look at that. sure what that oh this is the one that worked good on that's why it worked well I should put the other two bolts in there in the case too but there's two studs that are supposed to be in the case right now but I'm not gonna mock them up with that in there just yet it's so much easier using those two short bolts and having studs with a bunch of nuts on them pain in the ass it shouldn't make any difference the way we're doing it, so we won't. All right, it all cleaned up. Wasn't that much pressure, just enough to be a pain. Okay, back over to here. Now this one here, the chain's been eating on a little bit, so if you want, we can change this out later, but for now I'm going to use it. Because it's been working pretty good. We have a couple other ones over here to choose from out of the 
Dave's old parts. So if we can, if we got a better one, we'll use it. But other than that, this one here will be fine. The chain's going to make those marks in there again anyway, so it's just pre-clearanced. See, these bolts here are not supposed to be here. They're supposed to have studs. Which we have not put in yet, or I haven't put them in yet anyway. Okay, this is going to go into here. There we go. Those in there. So far everything's fitting in there nicely. Two driver right in front of me. Not pops are not good. Nuts have shoulders on them, a lot of them. See, this, is, this one doesn't have a shoulder, only has a slight chamfer to it. That shoulder right there goes against the inside. Some people don't care about that. I do. I like reason the same time every way, so you don't, you don't score up both sides, so it's pretty on the one side where it's supposed to be. Instead of being all chewed up on both sides. Okay, so everything's tight. That works. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put some bearings in here. Oop. Supposed to go in there and not fall out. I'm going to put them all in here this time. We're doing a full mock up here, so I want to make sure everything fits in there like it's supposed to be.
or your fingers. Nice and hard. That goes on there. I use the old sprocket for now. it. One of the nuts. Okay, I can rotate it easily. Okay. Stick the in play in there. Better in play over there, because it's the same on both. You can stick it in play in there, so that all works good. And it rotates. That's a plus. That's the main shaft. Oh, I forgot, you dumbass. I forgot two things that matter. You can't do shifting without shift dogs. Don't forget that. So there's our mock up, but now I gotta take it right back apart because I forgot two parts. So anyway, there it rotates there. Got our in plays in here, down in there. I got in plays in here. So everything looks pretty good. Except for dumbass forgot something. Gotta watch out for them dumbasses. Let's see if the kicker works while we're at it. What the hell? It's just our kicker arm right here. Should release at the bottom. Yep, releases, engages back in. Ratchet mechanism works. Kicker works again. Got, rotates my hand over here. Yep. It all works. As long as you keep that straight up and down, the parts will stay put. All right, I forgot the shift dog, so I got to take it all back apart one more time. Well, two more times. One more time to do the final. So this time I'm going to put these uh, these two things that we kind of need in there. It's hard to set up them shift forks without having the shift dogs. It makes it really, really rough to do. Probably almost impossible, I bet. Oh well. Nobody claimed I knew what I did, I knew what I was doing, did they? Would hurt to clean some of the crap off these rollers too, because I got all the goo in there. Makes it hard to rotate. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Assembled. We can try. Probably won't work, but who knows? Okay, I need to get this off of here. Ah. Ah. Damn, it's hard on my fingers. Ah. I'm gonna wash it so stinking hard to get off. Geez, that's hard on the fingers. Okay, this is reverse gear, which you not run, this is slow gear. So that goes on right like that. We take the washer, we put it right back on the same way we took it off. Otherwise the clearances might change. And 
That goes right on. Hello. That goes right on. And this time we put the uh, damn dog in, we forgot. Who are you? I'm the proud owner. Oh, you're the proud owner? Get to watch me do it again? Man, was that five a mess. Are you out there crashing your vehicle in five? No, uh, not me, but somebody is. There's cars everywhere. Cars everywhere. So I'm trying to put this together without taking the whole training apart again, but. Just taking. Some dumbass forgot to do something. Okay, we can't do it that way. Oh, losing bearings. Oh, now we're going to lose the bearings. Okay, this has to be engaged on the other side of the second gear retaining bracket. So if you put it inside the high gear like that, dog it in to hold it, then slip this assembly in and get the spline to line up. You should be able to slide it all together without losing everything. Kind of look like I'm just doing right there. Not helping. So if we flip the tranny over so gravity quits fighting me, it might go easier. Okay, we got second gear is tagged in there. Low gear is in. It's just gotta get that spline to go in there now. The spline has to hold on. Can you hold that right there so it quits rolling? Yep. Just hold the top. Move your hands. Slide over. Is this the one that wouldn't fit on the shaft because it's tighter than hell, I bet? Take a look out. This is why you take it all apart to do it because it takes forever to try to do it this way. I bet you this is the one that the fucking damn thing won't go on there because it's tighter than hell. Anyway. That other dog? But you just have to get it just right for it to go on. Hmm. I know how to do it. There, that's how to do it. Take all the crap out that's in the way. So you try to save time by dealing with the wash. By not doing it correctly, and you wind up spending ten times longer instead of just doing it like you're supposed to do it. Okay, now that goes on there. Low gear goes back on that. Goop on it. That goes in there. Okay. Try to do this down like that. Okay, now, once you get the camera, you can actually watch what I'm doing. It's just oh, yeah. down So we engage the dog. Other side. Okay, we got the uh, we got this on top of here now, but I got to clear the second gear retainer. But I also get the gears in here, which might not let me do all this at once, which it probably will not. There, just let me do it. Slipped it in. So now we're in there. There, it's like it's supposed to be. 
Now you can put all this back together like the easy way, like you're supposed to, and then put the rollers in there, and you don't fight it. Otherwise, you get frustrated fighting the damn pig. So even though you think you're saving time, you're actually wasting time. And we just lost the ratchet mechanism because this is turned. in there or not. Yes, it's in there. You see the camera? Down in there. You can't see shit with the camera. There we go. So you look down inside there, you can see that the tripper is engaged. Back in there. Mm-hmm. So it's holding it up. It's really hard to see that, but it's engaged on there. And the tapers are in the screw heads. This is in the right spot here, so we know it should be engaged. And get everything back in like it's supposed to be. Now I go put this back on. Slid together before. Now it's fighting me. I'm gonna turn to crap when you show up. Uh oh. Okay, switch sides. Are you blowing it back yet or are you still blown up? No. Nope. It works, you know. Okay. So I put it all together and forgot to put the dogs in there. <laughs> so you were just testing to see if I would notice? Yeah. How'd I do? You didn't notice. Uh oh. You notice how there's no room for lock washers. They assume that you're actually going to tighten the hardware down. Uh -huh. Most people in the old days knew how to tighten stuff down. Ah, oh, you bastard. I need to check to see if it's binding up first. Of course it's binding up. Why wouldn't it be binding up? That works. Okay, pretty good at poking rollers. Yeah.
Can't be in two gears at once, it doesn't work. Smaller screwdriver goes in further, you can swedge them around better. This screwdriver is too big. To make these smaller ones for. Did you see it move over? Mm hmm. I gotta do it right. Where'd the washer go? Washer, washer. You stole my washer. Alright, where'd it run off to? In some place. Go to the floor. I don't see it. Me either. You know inside the gearbox, did it? Maybe. No, it couldn't be. Could be. Really? Yeah. Pitch inside of here. Could be in a, yeah, because the rollers are in. Where are the rollers at? Yeah. Don't ask. The washer's on the other side. On the other side of the roller, it doesn't belong. See how the rollers are almost flush? Oh, yeah. That means the washer's in there already. Some guy put it together wrong again. <clears throat> It's a mock-up, it doesn't matter. The rollers can come out now and get tangled up in the sprocket. But likely we're not going to be doing any power runs right now like this, so it probably won't do any damage. No. Dogs in there now. Look at the shifts. See, uh, see we're in second gear right now. There's low gear, and there's both gears, high and low. Uh oh, that's the power gear. High and low doesn't work together. You have to move one out of the way. Oh, there's high gear. Oh, that's where that can be. Oh, there's oh, that was second gear. Okay, so everything seems to be working in there. We're not binding. There's our end play. Kicker still works. It works. Well, it works like a champ. Fast. That's a little weird. Look how fast that spins. Mm -hmm. Engage high gear. Look how slow that spins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second gear. Okay, that's it for that uh, that part of it. So now I gotta get all the shift work stuff out and work on that. So take a break. We'll be back.